Something you guys probably don't know about me is I actually like to explore old abandoned mine shafts and caves. In fact, if you hold on till the end of the video, I'll take you for an adventure. Well, while in these old mines, light is very important. Well, I mean, a lot of things are important, but especially light. Well, today I thought it'd be super cool if we built a compact LED lantern that could help illuminate the caves. I want it to be as lightweight and compact as possible so it could easily fit inside my pack. And of course, I want it to be as bright as possible. Now hold on, before you guys get all worked up and start typing away. <laughs> what a dweeb! <laughs> I know that LED lanterns are sold in stores and I could just buy one. However, I am having difficulty finding one I like that fits my needs. Most are much too large and much too heavy. I'm sure if I dug deep enough in the dark, dirty webs of the internet, I could find somebody somewhere selling what I want, but it's just so much more fun to build it yourself. So let's see what we can do. To get started, I opened up my FreeCAD software like I always do, and I don't want to bore you guys, so I'll skip over most of this, but I just got busy designing all of the parts I would need. I'm wearing pants, like I do in all my shots. And now with all of our parts designed, we can go ahead and drop them into the printer and get to printing. Ah, hey. So with all of our 3D printed parts now 3D printed, we're only going to need to gather a few more key components before we can actually begin assembling the lantern. First off, we're going to need a 1 inch PVC pipe, but not just any 1 inch PVC pipe, one of the thin walled ones. I have no idea what you call this, but there's like the regular one that's fat walled, and then there's this one that's skinny. and. You'll want the skinny one. <laughs> Anywho, after we have this, we're going to want to cut off a three inch long piece. Perfect. Now for a few electrical components. Here I have a nine volt connector, a power button, a small spool of LEDs, and some electrical wire. We are of course going to need a few tools beyond this, but this is basically all of our components. But for right now, all we need to focus on is the power button and a little bit of the wire. So what I'm going to do is take two short jumper wires and solder them onto the button. Perfect. Now we're going to take this little 3D printed cap and slide the switch right into it. So now we can go ahead and take this and our top base plate and slide the switch into the center hole, then take some of our Loctite super glue and super glue the two assemblies in place. And while we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and drop some hot glue in that little hole to make sure it just holds everything in place. There we go. Now temporarily back to soldering. I'm going to take our nine volt connector and slide a small piece of heat shrink over the two wires. Solder one of the leads of the connector to one of the leads of the switch. Solder a short jumper wire to the other lead of the connector. And then slide the heat shrink over the exposed joints and we can close it up. We will need to do a tad more soldering in a moment, but for now, we're good. Now I'm finally going to take our PVC piece and drill a 1 8 hole about 5 millimeters from the bottom of the pipe. We'll then feed our two loose wires from the assembly through that hole making sure to tape them off once they're through so we don't lose them back in there. And then we can feed the rest of the wires through the pipe, and drop some more super glue inside the 3D printed ring, and then snap the two parts together. Look at that, not even done yet in already a masterpiece. Actually, it kind of looks like a bomb. <laughs> Never mind. Next, we're going to need this crazy looking 3D printed piece. And actually, what the heck is this? Well, what we're going to end up doing is gluing this inside the tube like that. This will help hold our 9 volt in place so it doesn't flop around or slide around. Not only will this part make our project seem more official, but it'll also sound more official because you'll no longer be hearing every time you take a step. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and drop some super glue onto the back of this and then send it into the tube bump first until it's about 10 millimeters from the bottom. Ha! 
There we go. And of course, the reason why we push it 10 mil in from the bottom is so, surprise, the battery fits. <laughs> now time to put in the actual lights to make this thing a lantern. Here I have a spool of waterproof LEDs. They don't have to be waterproof, although it is super cool. It's just what I had on hand. So starting at the wires, I'm going to begin to peel off the double-sided tape on these lights and wrap them in a spiral manner all the way up the pipe. Although we are going to have to be careful and make sure we stop about 5 millimeters before we reach the top of the pipe because we do have the other cap. Now I don't even for a second begin to believe that this adhesive strip is going to be strong enough to hold these lights down forever, so I will be using some of our trusted super glue to make sure the job gets done. That took two feet of LED lights, in case anyone was wondering. So now we can go ahead and take a little bit more heat shrink tubing and solder our LED leads to our switch leads. Just be careful and make sure you solder the right ones together. There we go, now we can go ahead and push the wires as far into the pipe as we can, then secure them with some glue. And with that, it's now finally time for the other base plate. As you can see on the top of this base plate, there are two square holes, and those are actually for two 440 nuts. I'll go ahead and drop those in. So what we need to do before we can proceed is glue these two nuts in place, but we need to make sure we glue them straight on. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and screw in the bolts. There we go. Now we can go ahead and glue down the nuts, being very careful to ensure we don't glue the bolts in there as well. Perfect, and with this we are now finally just a few short steps away from finally conquering the entire tri-state area! Ah, sorry, different video, I mean finishing the lantern. Here I have a clear piece of two and a half inch wide tubing, and so what we want to do next is cut out a section that is 79 and a half millimeters long. Sorry I keep jumping back and forth between metric and not, I'm just trying to be as understandable and as precise as I can possibly be. Absolutely perfect. And now as I'm sure you have already surmised, what we're going to do now is slide our main assembly into the clear pipe, then take the other piece and slide it onto the opposite end. It may take a little bit of work to get both PVC pipes to fit, but with a little bit of patience, it's totally doable. Now if you notice on the ends, into the green pieces, there are small holes that I've designed in there. So what we want to do is take a drill and drill through the clear plastic so that we didn't have access to the holes. And then I'll take some very fine set screws and insert them into the holes to help hold everything in place. Now not only do these screws help hold everything together, but since they protrude just a little bit, they also help stop it from rolling. While we have our screwdriver handy and are bolting things down, here I have a 916 rope loop. Got it from Home Depot. And there just so happens to be two conveniently placed holes on the top of the lantern. So let's put them together. Now not only does this help protect the button from being damaged or accidentally turned on, but also with the help of this D-clip, also from Home Depot, we can hang it onto something easily or even just carry it a little bit easier. And with that, finally all that's left to do is to drop in our 9 volt, bolt on the battery cover, and then turn it on. Hey, there we go. Well, now that we know that it works, let's go somewhere where we can really test this thing.
I actually really like this and I think it officially passes the test. Lightweight, compact, and pretty bright. I'm like non-ironically actually going to be using this on a regular basis. And so there you guys have it, my compact LED lantern. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video and if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And we're going to see you next time. Thanks for watching and please feel free to subscribe.